Okay, boys and girls, it's us 10, and uh, you can see Myrmidon. He's just about to write something useful on the board. So be attentive, take your pencils and write down everything that he tells you. The next chapter is called Awareness of Habits. Do you have any habits, motherfuckers? Okay. Habits are a common problem in duel. And they are mostly seen in less experienced players. I would say noobs. For those of you who are familiar with poker, nameless, hi, you know that you play the person across the table, not your hand. There is good reason for this. People unconsciously give away signs and gestures that give away their intention. There are essentially habits. And the better the player, the easier you will be able to identify them. The same principle applies to duel. Pay attention to your opponent and look out for any repetition. This can be anything from a player attacking from the same location consistently, unconsciously gravitating to a certain position during battles, and even making zigzag movements. They are all habits that can be exploited. Many players will act out the same habits because our brain fundamentally work in similar ways as humans. By that principle they can also be contagious because one of the ways people learn is by mimicking others. Therefore, if you are able to identify the habit of one player, the chances are we can use it to our advantage against multiple opponents. Removing habits. The irony of habits is that you need to develop good ones to remove bad ones. The first thing you should do is observe your own games to see if you have any habits that need ironing out. Once you have identified them, you should ask yourself, what should I do instead? There is almost always something more efficient you could be doing. When you have figured that out, breaking the habit is a process that takes time and patience. To break a habit, you need to focus on what you are doing while playing. It is easy to, to get swept up in the moment causing your focus to shift from yourself to the opponent. You could argue that this is a habit itself. The key is to play at a slower pace and get into the habit of questioning kind of what the hell what the fuck am i doing everything you do do not worry about winning that comes later focus on improving yourself first a good example of a habit i broke in my early days as an aspiring dueler was the panic jumping during battles. This is still commonly seen by many players today, and that is because it is a natural stage of development. During battles, I noticed that players had a tendency to jump around erratically. So, instead of doing the tango with them, I decided to simply stand still and focus on aiming my crosshair on every place they were about to land. It worked incredibly well for two reasons. First, they expected me to jump around too, so it confused them. Their mind was not able to apply a cognitive process to the situation. It takes more focus to aim at a player standing still during the hit of battle than it does a moving target. It is because our brain can predict where a moving target is going, a trajectory. Second, and by the way, I hope you guys have enough time to write down everything that Myrmidon tells you. Second, I learned to be much calmer during battles. Panic is never useful in duel. It makes you predictable and cause mistakes. This was my first experience 
into a calm and articulate performance. And it's radically changed my results. Exploiting habits. Discovering a habit is one thing, but is another figuring out how to use it to your advantage. You essentially can read your opponent's mind at this point, or that it or that is what it feel like to them. They might even make wall hack accusation. But there are no mysterious or immoral deeds at work. It is simply the ability to, obs to observe attentively. There are a few different types of habits that can be exploited. And one of the most common is the persistent use of specific routes. If your opponent attacks from the same location consistently, then it is time to set up ambushes where they do not expect to be attacked. A good example of this on the edge is when players constantly attack into the room from the stairs. It's difficult enough to engage into the room when your opponent stands on the armor box for high advantage. But when a player attacks from this location over and over, Sooner or later the opponent will silently walk up to the lift and simply prevent you from using this route altogether. There are four locations between the room and the top of the lift that can be used for ambushes. All these ambushes work due to the principle that players naturally follow the same patterns. When they come up the lift, they expecting their opponent to be waiting in the mega health room for them. Therefore, they tend to believe that the route they are taking is safe up to a certain point. The more a player's mind is set on autopilot, the easier it will be to ambush them. Players who are impatient, aggressive, or feel like they have so much control, they're unstoppable motherfuckers, will also be susceptible to ambushes. First, at the bottom of the stairs, it is possible to deal a point-blank shot with a super shotgun on the player who is not cautious when coming down the stairs. This has become quite a common ambush in recent times and any experienced or intelligent player might shoot a rocket towards the bottom of the stairs to ensure the opponent is not setting up an ambush. Second, hey, pun, please, don't look at my skirt. Look at your notepad, little bugger. Second, catching a player on the ramp with a super shotgun is also useful. In order to pull off this ambush effectively, it must be unexpected and undetected. This goes back to the explanation of how players become hypersensitive, so they can pick up on small intricate anomalies or sounds. If your opponent suspects you are waiting for them by the ramp, it can be disastrous. It is an easy place to get hit by rockets, so it must be executed natural and used seldomly, otherwise it becomes useless. Third, the top of the lift is a simple ambush location. Hey manipulator, hello! And it is straightforward. If your opponent has poor reception and is not paying attention, then they will walk into the lift unaware that they are about to be fracked. Fourth, another method of ambushing at the top of the lift is to stand near the shell packs. When the opponent reaches the top of the lift, they will collect the grey armor and head into the room oblivious of their surroundings. This technique is useful if you do not have a rocket launcher. However, if the opponent escapes down the ramp without sustaining 
sustaining enough damage, then they can use it as a bottleneck to block your access back into the room. An obvious habit that you can use to your advantage are intricate movements that players make during engagements. It is a natural response for a human to avoid things by moving side to side or backwards and forwards, and it is this zigzag movement that you need to pick up on. When a player moves right to avoid a rocket, they will almost always instinctively move left to dodge the next. The same principle can be applied during railgun, a railgun standoff. Hey Nameless! Get your hands out from under the desk! Ok, a good boy. Take a flower. <laughs> Most players will rapidly move side to side to make themselves harder to hit. As stated in a previous part of this guide, it is harder to hit a player who stands still during the heat of the moment because it confuses our cognition and demands focus. For both the rocket and railgun situations, it can be easier to allow your opponent to move into your crosshair when, ta uh, when taking aim rather than trying to manually target them. The logic behind this boils down to two factors. First, it is mechanically easier to point your crosshair at one location rather than trying to point and click at a rapidly moving target. Second, there is a longer exposure time to hit a target moving into and out the view of a crosshair. This means that the shot has a much higher chance of hitting. Ok guys, it's the end of the chapter. And I hope that you, you've already applied some advice from the previous chapter. And uh, I hope you find this chapter pretty useful. And uh, see you later in the next one. Bye!